In today's video, we go inshore fishing and we show you how to catch look downs, how to fillet them, and how to cook them. This is Look Down Catch Clean Cook Fish Tacos. Good, whoa. Good morning, Dark Sizzle Nation. What's up? Whoa. <laughs> just flipped a fish into the boat, first fish of the morning, and he just came right off the hook, right off this DOA. And we got a moonfish. Oh, he's making a ton of noise. Also known as a look down, but they're beautiful fish and they love to eat those little DUAs. And I'm just trying to target anything that wants to bite this morning, but that's a beautiful fish. Great tasting, great eating. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and throw them right into my grizzly cooler. What's up guys, Putin here. If you're new to the channel, that's Darcy. This is of course our sizzle offshore. And we go fishing around here on this channel and we quit our jobs like three years ago now to pursue our dreams fishing. And our little thing is Fish Dream Inspire. So hopefully we're inspiring you guys to come down to sunny South Florida to do some fishing. And hopefully we're gonna give you some tips and tricks along the way. Uh, we're trying to get some tarpon in this spot this morning, uh, which are a little elusive for us. But uh, in the meantime, we're catching some look downs. And uh, I'm sure Josh will be hooked up right away. So let's get right to it. Hooked up! It took me a while to get my next fish, but I got another fish, baby. And it's a moonfish. <laughs> Just cast it deep into the channel that time. And it seems like they are in a school down deep and they're just starting to pick at this little this little lure, like a bunch of them at the same time, so you can feel the little bites. And it's pretty cool because you literally have to set the hook on these guys and you see how he got hooked. But they have they don't have teeth, but they're pretty sharp. There's these little points by their mouth here. But super thin, super pretty fish. And I always talk about they should make nail polish like him because he's so iridescent and cool looking, so shiny, delicious fish, even though they're like paper thin. But let's get him in the grizzly and try to catch more. I always forget to tell you guys what combo I'm using in order to catch these fish today. And starting with the lure, I'm using a DOA Terrorize. They have multiple different colors of these. And this one in particular has the, the red on the bottom and a green uh, back but there's assortment of colors. I like to use the darker colors. Attached to 30 pound fluorocarbon leader. Also, I'm using a loop knot here. That way this gives this lure a lot more action in the water and lets it basically, you know, have its action freely instead of tied directly to this knot. Then we've got it paired with my favorite snook rod, which is Shimano Travala. And then we have my Stella, a Shimano Stella 6000 combo that Brian bought me as a Christmas gift. And then this is paired, this has 30 pound uh, braid on it as my main line. So here we go. Putin just got himself a moonfish. Nice, he broke off his skunk. Broke off my skunk. I had a lot of skunk on this morning too. Very skunky. Oh. So flippy floppy and noisy. Like Look how skinny. Hooked up. Oregon. Hooked up on the bottom. Yep. <laughs> okay. We see it, Dark Sizzle. Another great moonfish. All right, we gotta get out of this spot and try and catch something else. Let's go. Stop casting. <laughs> I think I found the secret spot for the moonfish, but you know me, I love to fish, so I gotta get a, I gotta get one more cast in while he's getting ready to go. Oh, this is a giant one. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Huge. Oh! I just lost the biggest moonfish ever! Oh! It's only a moonfish, but I'm still mad. Oh yeah, crushing it. That's a pretty big moonfish. Look down. Look down, moonfish, look down. I just figured out exactly where they're sitting in the water column. And they're kind of just on the bottom feeding. But it's pretty cool to catch these. Shush up, I'm trying to talk to my fans. Quiet. But it's pretty cool to catch these guys in the middle of the day like this. And it's a fun bite for kids, your family, or whatever, but a lot of times you catch them at night, in the night lights, in the docks and stuff, so that's a nice size one. And they're so cool, really interesting looking and weird, and fun to catch. Oh, 
there. We got quite a few look downs, aka moonfish in the grizzly cooler. We're gonna go home now. We're gonna fillet them up and we're gonna cook them. Nice land shark lager for a nice long day of fishing today, but I'm very tired. Well worth it because we're gonna have delicious look down for dinner, moonfish. And we got them in the grizzly cooler. We got a total of 10 of them in here. And the reason why is because the other day we caught a bunch of them as well and I did not fillet them and just kept them on ice in the grizzly and they're good to go. They're just, they're just as fresh as they were the day I caught them. So we're gonna go ahead and start on this look down. And they're pretty cool, even though they're so thin, it's really cool to fillet. I'm gonna be using my six inch Whiffy from Bubba Blade. And this knife is basically made for this type of fish. It's very thin, very sharp, and it's gonna get the job done. So basically, this fish in particular has a lot of head meat. So I'm just gonna make an initial cut behind the head. And then just run that knife along the backbone here. But also while I'm doing this, I want to let you guys know, for those of you who don't know, I am left-handed, so it might look a little awkward to you on camera. Uh, but besides that, I also have a couple family members that I would like to tell you about, and I don't ask you guys for a lot, but just hear the story really quick and um, then go ahead and click the links down below in the description. But my dad has been dating um, his girlfriend for over 15 years and she's basically like my stepmother she's been in my life quite a while and her daughter she has a daughter Rachel who is married to Eric who is a firefighter and also a realtor and last week on the 27th of December he somehow collapsed on the job at the firefighter fire station and basically his heart stopped beating and they had to use the defibrillator I think that's how you pronounce it to bring him back to life and he also was in cardiac arrhythmia and ever since then, he has now been in an induced coma and he's on an ECMO machine, which basically that machine recirculates your blood, takes your blood out of your body, oxygenates it, and then puts it back into your circulatory system. And he has not awoken since he collapsed on the ground. So they basically have a GoFundMe account for him and the family because Rachel has three young kids. And, you know, he's, you know, every once in a while, a hero needs saving. So in this particular instance, I'm asking you guys to please help Rachel and her family. Um, they're great folks. And like I said, I was even in Rachel's wedding. So I'm going to link all that information down below. Check it out. And if you want to support them, support them. And if you don't, just, just pray for them tonight. That's all I ask. And so now we got this whole side off of the look down. And now you can see how my filet looks. It's really white, really nice. And basically I just went through the head and then just left the rib cage intact. Now the last thing to do is take the skin off. And this is a little bit tricky because this fish actually has such a thin, thin piece of skin. You gotta be really careful when you do this. Just go nice and slow. I'm gonna use the same knife, 45 degree angle. And I'm just gonna try to separate the meat from the skin. It's a little difficult, but practice makes perfect. And I got 10 of them to do. So I might get a little better at this, but this is my first go in a little bit. So see how I do. There we go. We got the filet off and you can see it's not a whole lot of meat, but it looks quite delicious just looking at it. And that's gonna make a great fish sandwich. So now I just gotta do the other side of this particular look down and then I got 10 more to do. What's up guys? And welcome to another edition of Cooking with Putin. Yes. Your favorite segment. I do most of the eating around here, although I'm on a diet. So I'm also doing the cooking portion of these videos and Darcy is the guinea pig. We got those beautiful look downs. Like Darcy said in the video, in the filet part, the meat is delicious and white, look at that. And uh, with some movie magic, I've already cooked up a lot of this stuff for you, so you're not, you don't have to sit here all day. And also, in the other video, I think we went over a little bit more how to catch them with shrimp and stuff. So if you wanna yeah. check that out, we'll put a link up over, oh, it goes on my left shoulder actually. So there you go. So today, we got fish tacos. And we're using all stuff from the refrigerator, so I've made a couple substitutions, which I think are gonna be awesome. And the main one, Instead of uh, celery, not, not celery, but lettuce, what's the other stuff? Cabbage. Instead of cabbage, we didn't have any cabbage, and I cabbage tastes like nothing, right? I decided to use broccoli. What recipe are you using? You don't need a recipe for tacos, star sizzle. You oh. just get a taco shell and you, you throw- You just randomly you said cabbage, so I wasn't really sure. I was confused, sorry. Gotcha. Tacos traditionally have cabbage in them, gotcha. okay? It's so all lettuce a lot of times. Fish and, tacos do, yes. All tacos, all right? And so today I'm using broccoli because it's got that crunch. 
I was gonna use cauliflower, but I thought broccoli had some more flavor. So, we got cut up tomatoes. We got cut up onions. You love onions, right? Yeah. She loves onions. I got cut up broccoli. I grilled, grated some cheese, that's cheddar cheese. And I also made this delicious sauce, which is on the internet, says it's the best taco sauce in the whole wide world. So I got some B-roll here for you, check it out how I made that, and also cutting all this stuff. And we're all set to go here. I just wanted to comment on one thing, is I like the trick to my tacos, is the shells, okay? I like to use soft shells, that way they don't break and just fall over the place, right? And I like to put them in a pan, right here, with a little butter, right? I like to do it individually, it makes your tacos so much better. Yeah. And I put it in there, and I throw it in there, the butter helps the brown a little bit though, sizzle, okay? And you can leave it in there as long as you want, the longer you leave it, the browner it gets. Yeah. And then you just swirl it around, you can swirl it around with your hand. And then when it gets brown, or however you like it, you flip it over, and this is gonna be Josh Sizzle's taco. Yes, it's gonna get a nice hot taco. Babbity boop, that's all done. Woo, steaming hot. I have a superpower, if you didn't know, that my skin and mouth is impervious to heat. Isn't yes. that true? So I just take that off the, off the thing. Yeah. So we got that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this fish in here for you, Josh Sizzle. Thank you. Now the fun part of tacos is making them yourself. What else do you wanna put in there, Josh Sizzle? I'm gonna do cheese. A little cheese, she loves cheese. Where's my garlic? Oh, I put it's garlic. Okay. There's garlic okay. powder in the sauce. I'll take the onions. Onions? Onions and the onions. Try the, try the broccoli for me. That's the little trick today. Go ahead. Just put a little teeny bit. And here, try this. Try the best sauce for tacos in the whole wide world, according to the internet, and we know the internet never lies. It's a lot of sauce. Well, you don't gotta use all of it at once. That looks good, Darcy. Of course, you can also use standard uh, salsa, of course. Mm -hmm. All right, so here you go, Sizzle. You guys can see, I got four tacos made. This one's for Dar Sizzle, the rest are for me. All right, let's try that taco, Dar Sizzle. All right. Try one while we wait. I took a really big bite so I could get to the meat, but it's really yummy. It's got that crunch and the really nice taste of the fish. I really didn't taste too much of the sauce yet, but I only took one bite so far. But it's really yummy. Can't complain. And a nice hot taco is delicious. Let me take one more bite. Great job by pudding. All right, that's really great. I, I, I think broccoli turned out even better than I thought. It's yummy. It gave it that extra crunch that it needed for a taco. Yeah. It so good. And it's also a lot more nutritious mm -hmm. than, you know, lettuce or cabbage, which has, like, no nutritional value, all right? Right. So, thank you so much for watching this video. What do you got to say, Dar Sizzle? Yeah, thank you for watching the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And um, yeah, just make sure you check out the links down below like I had mentioned earlier. We'd appreciate that. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your, your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. That was really quick. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tacos are good, aren't they? Oh, press, press, press stop on that. We should do that.